water. Feel at 100. And firm. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. We have a fun one today, the Beretta PMXS. This is a new-ish, uh, comes ships as a pistol, a nine millimeter. Uh, as you can see that I already SBR'd. So if you guys are here on the channel, you're probably here for SBR reviews and suppressor reviews, of course. So today we're gonna cover the PMXS here, what makes it so special here in the studio, a little bit of history on it, and then we're gonna hit the range and see just how it performs. Let's go ahead and get to it. All right, first things first, let's get rid of the boring stuff, get the boring stuff out of the way, the specifications. Now I'm gonna give you uh, two links here, of course, one without the stock as it ships as a pistol and then one with the stock in its SBR form. But starting off from the top comes in a overall length in pistol form at 16.4 inches and with the A3 tactical stock on here in SBR form comes in a overall length of 25.5 inches. Width 2.8 inches, its height 9.8 inches and it weighs only 5.5 pounds, which is mostly attributed to the polymer lower frame housing here, and then the top part is uh, polymer encasing over a steel tube. Now let's just work our way up here. So we'll go back down to the frame. We have an ambidextrous selector here, very positive, tactile. You have ambidextrous magazine release, as you can see here. And then you have a bolt catch on the left side. Fun fact, you can actually switch the charging uh, bolt handle uh, from left to right side should you wish. Although as a right-handed shooter, it is quite nice just to leave it on the left side. Magazine well is going to be straight, has a slight flare to it. Trigger looks like it's gonna be an AR-15 type. It is hammer fired. They are in the same sort of position. I don't know if they're gonna be a direct swap or not, but uh, Certainly is AR-15 reminiscent. As far as the trigger, slight creep, and then a clean break. Reset's not too bad. I would probably put it in the middle range of a mil-spec AR-15 trigger group. Uh, certainly not the worst, certainly not the best. Right smack dab in the middle. Uh, so as far as the frame, not much else there. You got some grip here, uh, uh, some texturing here on the side with the Beretta Trident logo. Good to see that. And some uh, anti-slip lines here on the front and the rear. But other than that, that's it for the frame. Moving up to the upper receiver. Again, this is encased in steel. I'll show you some close-ups here so you guys can kind of see the dual layers. But it is polymer over uh, steel tube. <clears throat> and then on the top, we have a solid metal Picatinny rail option, which is really nice. And then you have Ford HK style ring loops here and then rear by the buttstock for your uh, hooked style uh, QD sling mounts. Barrel. Barrel comes in at 6.9 inches. That's going to give you great velocity, especially when shooting subsonic. And of course, it is threaded half by 28. I would have liked to see a tri-lug mount here. However, you can use a tri-lug adapter, a half by 28 to tri-lug. The only bad part about that is it's gonna stick out about yay right here. So it is gonna extend the barrel a little bit as far as a six. Uh, hanging off the front, you'll see a four grip. This does not ship with it, obviously, because this is in a SBR setup. This is the A3 tactical uh, Ford grip and they have many versions available on their website and these can even unscrew and you can change this one out for a knurling version It's pretty sweet. Now yeah, while we're on a3 tactical give them a shout out. They sent this in guys Really nice of them to do. I'll show you some close-ups here. Really really high quality stock made specifically for the PMXS Very solid lockup. No wiggle at all has adjustable uh, cheek riser here 
that you can uh, omit should you choose to. And you have a nice rubberized uh, directional texture grip there. Keeps it tight on your shirt. So pretty nice. Does not lock close, but it is pretty tight on the hinge. So it's not going to really open up on you. But nice compact little package, especially considering you can actually shoot it with the stock folded, which is pretty dope. So all in all, pretty cool little platform. Retails for $12.99 on the Beretta website. Uh, you can find it uh, substantially less around the thousand dollar mark floating around on gun broker and random gum shops so pretty sweet uh, that's a whole lot of pistol caliber carbines especially made by the oldest gun manufacturer in the entire world beretta now on to the magazine you've probably seen this magazine before and that is because that is a b and t magazine so a little history lesson on this guy here background Great great grandfather would be the Tech 9, followed by the BNT uh, P26, and then Beretta bought the licensing rights from BNT to produce this, which they call the PMX for the submachine gun version, and then PMXS for the uh, civilian pistol semi automatic version. Uh, that being said, has a lot of similarities as you've probably noticed to the tried and true Beretta M12 submachine gun. Now, that gun has been around for quite a while, so it's hard to say who's the granddaddy of what, uh, because the M12 came out in 1959, I wanna say. The MP5 for history lesson came out in 1964, I believe. So, these guns have been out for quite a while. The reason Beretta wanted to go with this as their new and improved submachine gun for uh, their uh, armed services like their special forces group and uh, law enforcement officers in their major cities is because of the training and the vehicle mounts uh, so they training is very expensive most of you guys know that by now if you're on my channel you're probably a more seasoned shooter uh, to put Thousands and thousands of officers and soldiers through new training regiment just because you bought a new weapon platform is very expensive. Uh, so all the control groups are very similar to the Beretta M12 submachine gun that this is replacing. Um, the rate of fire is a little higher on this, but the generalized design and outer dimensions closely follow the M12. And that's very important when you're talking vehicle mounting options, whether it's in a door setup, or a rack between two patrol officers. All their cars are outfitted with mounting systems that engage with the body type of the, uh, or the external dimensions of an M12 submachine gun, which this shares. Uh, so that's gonna save Italy a ton of money just in mounts, let alone the training that they would have to put everybody through. So they can pretty much just hand this to everybody, new and approved, upgraded weapon platform, and everybody knows how to use it with minimal to no training. Uh, so you can use PNC magazines. Beretta does have their own licensed version with some directional grip here. And of course the Beretta Trident logo. I believe they also said that they slightly improved upon the feed lips on the, on the BNT. Uh, I have not compared it to my other BNT mags yet. Uh, but all in all, pretty sweet little rig. But if you're on this channel, not only do you wanna see it in its SBR form, you want to know what it sounds like suppressed and so do I because I have not shot it yet so I'm very excited to hit that range. This is direct blowback operated. It is a very large heavy bolt. I am not going to take it down here in the studio. Uh, there's plenty of videos on YouTube showing that. I'll show you a couple b-roll shots here of what it looks like with the upper and lower separated. It's very easy takedown. Uh, obviously with the magazine out and the weapon unloaded you push the pen out uh, up, up here slide the upper receiver forward you'll see it come unhooked here you take it apart pull the bolt out to the rear dual recoils springs and rods very straightforward uh, again plenty of videos on that so i don't want to bore you to death here in the studio when we could be out on the range shooting which is exactly what we're going to do before we get shooting a quick word from our sponsor capital armory they're the nation's largest silencer dealer and have expanded their silencer shipping ability to multiple states with even more on the way they can still ship directly to Texas residents, 
but they can now deliver silencers directly to your door for those in many other states. The process is simple and keeps everything in house. So there are no additional dealers, transfer fees, or headaches. They manage the entire process from start to finish to make your life easier. The process is very simple. Once you purchase a silencer online through their website, you'll be contacted to begin your online customer profile to provide them with fingerprints and other necessary information to complete your e-file form four. After the ATF approves your form, Capital Armory will initiate electronic transfer paperwork with you and your silencer will be mailed directly to your front door. And the best part is, your customer profile only needs to be done once, so you'll be ready to go for all future orders. Head to CapitalArmory.com today to learn more. All right, guys, we made it out to the range. Finally, I, I got the COVID. And then, of course, Florida has no chill, and it's been raining every damn day. In fact, it rained so much, my other range that I use flooded out. It is completely underwater, like knee high. So uh, a good buddy of mine, we'll just call him Jay, uh, allowed us today to use his personal private shooting range, which is pretty badass of him to do. And I have targets, I have steel set up from 25 yards, uh, 50, and then 100 yards away. So we are gonna be plinking with the new PMXS. I threw a new um, USO sight on here, a red dot from one of my other guns. And uh, off camera, I'll get it sighted in, but let's just see what happens with the first round fired and see how she does, unsuppressed. Of course, we'll switch to uh, suppressed, of course, because you are on the NFA Review channel. Not only do you want to see it in its SBR form, but you want to see it suppressed. However, keep in mind, right now, I am using a lapel microphone. But at the end of today's review, I will switch my mics out so you guys can hear what it sounds like truly with a suppressor. Let's see what we got here. And there is construction going on. He's got a uh, land, he's doing some land clearing out here. So he has a large tracked vehicle out there, a bulldozer. You'll hear it off and on camera all day. It's not too far off. <laughs> oh yeah. Recoil impulse is nice. Bolt held open. Let's uh, hit some hits at a hundred yards. I don't know if you can hear the hits, but we are getting hits at 100 yards with a sight that is not totally zeroed in. All right, off camera, I'm gonna adjust this optic, get it perfectly dialed in, and we'll do some more shooting. Okay, off. Off camera, I put about, uh, well, almost a whole mag through it. Got it decently dialed in. And we were, sh we were shooting 124 grain uh, FMJ. Now we're shooting 115 grain. Just want to run it through the gauntlet and make sure it runs well on every weight. And let's just uh, bebop these guys. I think it might be, ooh, wow, that is smooth using the uh, charging handle. All right, we'll push out to 50. Hit, 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 and hit. See if I can hit the plate rack. Hit. Come on. It was stuck. Got the other one. There you go. That's a one of some spicy meatball. Wow, that is really smooth. That is nice. 
Well, I was literally swimming in the hearing protection there because we are in Florida and it has zero chill. So that was nice to get off. We are going to be shooting the YHM R9. Looks like I have a Rex Selenium adapter on the end. I have a tackle box full of adapters. So I just grabbed whatever, looks pretty cool. And we are shooting from a uh, two-way warehouse. They are 147 grain, new manufacturer, subsonic full metal jacket. So let's see what this sounds like. I'm just gonna shoot the berm first way out there so I can see what it sounds like, even though it's gonna sound different on the lapel microphone to you. Ooh, okay. That is cool. Shoot some steel. Come on, fall. It's not gassy. And I must say that's probably attributed to the fact that the rear of this thing is completely sealed up with that cap on the rear. Uh, so that is a nice side effect of the design. Let's stretch out a little bit, see if I can hit that secondary plate rack. Am I hitting low? Yep. Oh, okay. Very cool. Let me get that smooth action. Oh man. I wish you guys at home could feel that. How smooth that bolt is. Oh. Come on, fall. I will point blank you, you little fuck. Ah. All right, we got two IDPAs at a hundo. Let's hold over here for this fatty brown. Oh! I can barely see the one on the left. That was one take. First round hit at 100. Suppressed. Subsonic, there it is again. Well, if you had any doubts on accuracy, you could throw that out the window. And my God, you guys need to hear and feel what that feels like. It is just getting smoother by the round. Suppressor stayed pretty tight. Just loosened up a little bit. I didn't really throw it on there and gorilla tighten it though, but so far I'm really impressed with this thing. All right guys, as you can see, I swapped the microphones out and I'm gonna keep this first camera angle the same as previous so you guys can hear exactly what I was hearing. So, you know, take note of the birds, wind, frogs, you got the tracked vehicle out there working, all those ambient noises, okay? There's the echo. We have a shipping container about uh, 30 feet to my right. Okay, that's just the bolt. So, 147 grain. Okay. Subsonic from Two Way Warehouse. I'm just going to shoot the burn way out there. started mag dumping so it's less pressure build up with rapid fire I guess you can a little bit as you can see there's still plenty escaping the board it wasn't, it wasn't horrible Burp. got 
that far. Yeah. All right, I'm going to switch camera angles, give you guys a different view of it suppressed, and we'll wrap it up. All right. Last mag. Shoot the burn. Shoot that water. Steel at a hundred. Berm. I like. All right, guys, final thoughts on the Beretta PMXS. So, first thing I want to mention about this guy here is how accurate it was. Now, we weren't shooting groups or anything, but we're hitting plate racks at 25 and 50 yards, and then IDPA steel. I think it's two thirds size, so a little smaller at 100 yards without even trying. And again, I just sighted in the sight with, you know, 20 rounds or so and full send. And as you can see, I still have the, the YHM R9 suppressor on the end, and that did uh, very well today. So kudos to YHM for that. Um, it sounded very good suppressed. I mean, this thing has a massive bolt carrier in it, it's huge moving back and forth and i don't know if it's the polymer encasement around the metal receiver underneath but it has a very pleasing tone to it when that bolt is reciprocating when you're shooting so that's something i wanted to kind of notate to you guys uh so accurate good good suppressor host i did get a little gas build up there uh while shooting uh, you know in succession rapid succession uh, so if you just let the gas pressure bleed down a little bit, I think it should be fine. Um, trigger actually felt like it was smoothing up, much like a mil-spec AR-15 trigger would. So I thought that was pretty interesting. I wanted to note that as well. But what was really noticeable was how smooth the action was getting with not many rounds fired. I mean, I fired maybe 300 rounds the entire day on and off camera. And towards the end, that bolt was getting super smooth. So that was pretty cool to note um, that the more you shoot it, the smoother it's going to get. So that was pretty cool. All the parts are meshing together. Everything's just jiving well. Very, very smooth. Uh, those of you out there that have one, you know exactly what I'm talking about because uh, it was very noticeable. Um, the A3 tactical stock was great. Uh, didn't have any wiggle or anything stayed locked up tight nothing came loose and the ford grip we actually changed out on the range i put on the one with more knurling uh and i actually like that one a little better i like the aesthetics of the other one because it's very mp5 like however this one uh definitely was better when shooting so if you guys have any questions like always leave a comment below and i will get to it now I just bought an Italian car and I put a Beretta 92 in the glove box, of course, but I'm thinking about putting this guy in the front and making up some like bad boys customized gun mount system in there just because why the hell not? So if you guys think I should do that, let me know below, talk me into it, and I'll figure out how to get that done. Maybe we do a follow-up later. But hope you guys enjoyed the review. Suppress Fest is right around the corner to the day I'm filming right now. It is exactly 30 days away. So if you haven't checked it out, go to suppressfest.com. We have some killer companies coming out. One of the most impressive lineups we've ever had. And it is a two-day event. We have the permit approved from the county, two days of shooting limited entry so you guys don't have to wait in line all day and you can do more shooting so for more information check out suppressfest.com and i'll see you guys next video